Through the first week of the NBA, the leading scorers are Luka, Steph, and Cam Thomas. Wait, what? Thomas has started the season with three straight 30-point games and more impressively shooting a blistering 61.5% from the field. Cam actually forced Jacques Vaughn to put him in the starting lineup after going crazy off the bench in the season opener. As you look at some of these insane buckets, you already know that he's never seen a shot he didn't like, so he's letting it fly from everywhere and so far he's hitting it at a high rate. Now that he has the green light, it won't be strange to see a 50 piece from him this season. Next up, we got maybe my favorite guy on this list and that is Nas Reed. He moves extremely well around the basket, finishes strong and on top of that has an incredibly soft touch for a big man, both inside the paint but also outside the 3 point line. Minnesota ran this screen the screener action where Nas sets the pick, then gets one himself, getting an open look and knocking it down. The 16 points and 4 rebounds so far come in only 25 minutes per game, playing behind 2 starting centers in Cat and Gobert. I've been saying it since last season, Nas Reed needs more space to showcase his game, so check him out when you watch the Timberwolves. Now we got an underrated rookie who's being overshadowed by all the hype about Wimbanyama and Chet Holmgren. The 12th pick in the draft, Derek Lively had an impressive debut against Wimby in the season opener and Jason Kidd immediately inserted him in the starting lineup. The high-flying big man is a good screener and a quick roller to the bucket, so he's always in a position for something like this. Derek Lively with the big finish! Okay! I see you, young fella! The math ceiling with Powell or Kleba as the starting center is definitely not high, so I'm glad that the rookie got the opportunity early on to gain experience. Moving on to a guy that's putting himself in the most improved player conversation. Through these first 4 games, Jalen Johnson is going from 5.5 to 14.5 points per game. A huge jump both in numbers but also in his overall fluidity on the court. Jalen is terrific at attacking the basket and can finish through contact as you can see. His speed on the break allows him a bunch of easy ones as well. And opportunities like these are a big reason why at the moment he's 66% from the field. With 7 rebounds, 1 block and 1.5 steal per game, Johnson is showing that he's growing into an all-around guy that the Atlanta Hawks can count on. Next up, I already know that nobody watches the Pistons but Jalen Duran has been bulldozing through everyone in these first few games. Him and Kate Cunningham look great in the pick and roll and I gotta imagine that Kate's development will definitely help Duran as well. This is another guy who might show up in the most improved category. So far he's jumping from 9 to 15.5 points and from 9 to 13.5 rebounds per game. I know it's very early in the season but this is promising. Alper and Shangun is another guy that won't get a lot of screen time except from Rockets fans but he definitely deserves it. Shangun is balling out at the start of the season and if he can keep up these numbers he'll be a phenomenal player. Alperin's touch around the basket is silky smooth, he's got the back to the basket game, he can turn around and flip it in and can shoot the ball as well. I love his style. He even seems to be trying out this half Dirk half Jokic shot which is kinda funny. One of the best passing big men in the league constantly finds his teammates at the right time, putting him in a great position to score. The Rockets won't win a lot of games but you need to follow Shangun's development. Now I had to get another personal favorite in here, that is Devin Vassell. His game is just incredibly attractive to watch, reminding me of DeMar DeRozan a little. He can drive to the rim and has one of the prettiest mid-range pull-up jumpers. I mean seriously, this is a beautiful shot right here. Vassell did sign a monster contract this summer so the expectations will be high on him, but I think he'll definitely deliver. The way the Spurs are building this team and of course if Wemby develops, I think that they can be in the playoff mix in 2-3 to three years. Let me know in the comments who you'll be following closely this season. Subscribe and talk to you in the next one. Peace out.